Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and today we'll take a look at the latest update for Android 15. Now currently we are on beta 2.2 and if you are a part of the beta program, if you'd like to take a look at what is new, updated or changed, you just want to go inside of your Android beta feedback application. On the very top left hand side is where you go to release notes and this is where you can read everything. Now if you're not a part of the beta program, I can always place this link as well as another link below this video inside the description so this way you can have all the details. Now this update was pushed out on June 3rd. You can notice that beta 2 was first pushed out on May 15th. 2.1 which was some smaller little bug fixes was released on May 20th. Then here we are June 3rd with the latest update. And this one's mostly again for some bug fixes, but there are a few of these in here that if you are part of the beta program, you probably ran into some of these problems. Now we'll first take a look at what is new with this update. Then we'll take a look at my top five favorite features so far introduced with Android 15. Now in my past videos, I have already covered every single thing so far. Maybe there's about 20 different brand new features or elements, but I'll just give you my top five. So first off with what this update brings with the bug fixes, it states here it fixed the remaining issues where creating a private space on a device for the first time removed app icons from the home screen. So the private space is one of those newer features with Android 15 where on the very bottom of your application tray, this is where you can open up your private space and you can put in some applications there as if you have a completely different user of the phone or maybe you just want to separate your personal from the business side of things. So going back over into some of these updates, fixed an issue with the wallet roll that prevented NFC payments from functioning in some cases, fixed an issue where the app drawer didn't open when swiping up, fixed an issue with NFC observe mode that prevented NFC payments from processing in some cases. So a lot of stuff with NFC is being fixed with this update here. Also, fixed an issue that sometimes caused videos that were recorded using 10-bit HDR to have a green tint, and fixed various other issues that were impacting system stability, interactivity, and connectivity. Now, one thing I do wanna share with you, just so you have all the details, I took a screenshot of this update, and the update size is at 55 megabytes. Now, mine was different than someone else that I saw online, and I believe it's because maybe they didn't do that last update that was about 13 days ago. Theirs, in terms of what they posted on their site, it was the exact same update, but theirs was sitting at 72 megabytes. So it could be either a completely different carrier update. Maybe they're using Verizon or AT&T. I use Google Fi, so maybe mine was smaller, or they just didn't do the update from two weeks ago. Now, for some of you who are wondering about the beta release or the whole platform stability or the final re release, it's the exact same thing every single year. Developer previews is always February and March. Beta releases is April, May, and June, and right now we're just at the very beginning of June. So later, we'll see a platform stability update. So this way, if anybody would like to get in on it at that point, so then you're not so early on in the beta, you just wanna wait for one more update here coming out in June. And then also still again, another update in July, still part of the platform stability final release will be in August. So now that we took a look at everything brand new for this particular update, now let's take a look at my top five favorite features so far of Android 15. And sometimes this list can change every couple weeks. Now, so far out of everything that is new in Android 15, one of the things that I love is the new user interface of the volume rocker. Now this is definitely in the top five because at least for me, I am going through this menu on a daily basis. It's not a set and forget type of thing. I'm going through changing either the the, the volume of the ring, the volume of the notifications, putting it over into you know silent or vibrate, whatever it may be. Also changing the media volume when I'm connected to either just my phone or a Bluetooth speaker, switching where it comes out of. So the user interface of the volume rocker has been improved and I'm a pretty big fan of it. Feature number two is Google Wallet. Now, if you've never used Google Wallet or if you haven't used Google Wallet for a while, you might wanna take a look at it. There are so many updates and changes with this. Every week they're adding in new countries, new features. So it's not just a place for you to use NFC to make a payment with your debit card or credit card. It'll now actually take a look through your Gmail and add in maybe your rewards number 
or add in a event or a travel or anything in that matter. Also, when you go inside of here, again, it's not only your, your payment card, you have your transit pass. So if you're using different transits, you're able to add it in. You can take a look at the entire list. You can also search through city or the transit name itself on the very top or the agency. You also have your loyalty cards. So if you have any type of loyalty cards or programs, you can add them in with a whole entire list. Also, same thing with gift cards. And then for your ID, if you live in particular states, you can go through TSA so much easier and faster. It's been approved in Arizona, Colorado, Georgia, Maryland, and then more states to come. Now, I remember when this was either at only one or zero states. I think it was only at one at one point. And now taking a look at it, there is four. And then on the very bottom for photo, you can create a pass using a photo with a barcode or a QR code. Now there's a lot of different changes with the wallet application, which is why I wanted to pull up this page right here. This will give you all the details of what is new or improved or changed from June 4th or March 7th. March 7th actually added in a ton. So this is just talking about all of the announcements, uh, all the different countries that's being added in, all the NFC uh, expansions that's happening, newer features that are coming in. So like I mentioned from before, if you haven't used it for a while, you might want to take a look at it. Movie tickets, boarding passes from Gmail are now surfacing in the Google Wallet, which is what you just saw just a little bit ago. Uh, Google Wallet is launching in other countries. There's additional features. There's even a beta feature. Uh, flight passes now use date time by default and show both the date and time on the front of the pass. So there's a lot of things going on with Google Wallet with these updates. So this is that other link that I can share with you inside of the description if you guys would like to read more of the Google Wallet. And also speaking on the Google Wallet, if we go inside of the settings and you go inside of apps for the default apps, down over here for your wallet app, it gives you the ability to switch it to a different wallet app if for some reason you don't want to use the Google Wallet. Now, if you remember before Android 15, Google Wallet was the only wallet that was by default. Now it gives the ability for other developers out there to create it for Android devices to add it on over into the Google Pixel devices or any other Android phones. Feature number three is private space. Now I've mentioned this before. I think almost anybody and everybody and their mom has also talked about this. Private space is one of the big things when it comes down to what is new with Android 15. You saw my password is one, two, three, four. That's just for the purpose of these, of these videos. I always change it when I'm actually using it in real life, but this is where you can have a separate part of your phone, your personal side of things up here, and then your business side of things over here. So this way you can go inside of your camera application. You can take photos of either Christmas gifts or, or birthday gifts, Mother's Day gifts, Father's Day gifts, whatever it may be. So this way it's not on your, your normal personal side of the phone. If more than one person looks at your device, it's a way that you can keep that one hidden. Same thing, you know, for Chrome, or maybe you're at work and you don't want all of that work stuff that you're Googling or searching or, or researching. You don't want it to be on your personal side of things. You can just keep it on this business side of it as well. And, and anything that you take in terms of photos will show up right over here inside of files. Everything you do here does not move up into the personal side, even the application. So these right here are logged in with different profiles than my personal side. So if my son wants to use it, I go right here inside of YouTube. He can watch his kid videos and it doesn't mess or bother with my personal side of it. I have different logins for these games here. So this way I don't have to log out and log back in so I can have completely different profiles, super easy and fast and convenient to get into. And then right here is where you can lock it. There are settings that you can go through if you would like to make small little changes. Feature number four, this is one of those that you can set and forget, but it is definitely in the top five just because I like the privacy when it comes down to using internet, especially those open internet connections if you're at a cafe. So when you go inside of network and internet, then you go inside of internet and let's say that you connected to a Panera's Wi-Fi, right? And if you would like to keep everything private, what you can do is once you're connected, you go inside of settings and then you go down to privacy. And then this is where you can either turn off or turn on send device name. This was not there in Android 14. With Android 15, now it's set up to where when you're connecting to a Wi-Fi network or somebody's hotspot, then you're not sending your device name. So this way you are just a, you know protected a little bit right there. Now, the other thing that you can do is when you go back one more page and you're looking at your full internet page, as you scroll down, you take a look at the network preferences. Right here, you can already see I have this one turned off. 
But originally on Android 14, this is one that was always turned on. You weren't able to toggle it off and it allows for WEP networks, but it is a older security protocol that's less secure. So what you can do, you can turn this off so you're not connecting to older security protocols. Feature number five is one that's very convenient if you'd like to take a break from an application, but you don't want to fully delete it. What you can do is you can go into the app info of that application and you can archive it. So if you'd like to take a break from Twitter or you wanna take a break from Instagram, all you would have to do is archive it. And what it does is it pretty much uninstalls the application, but it keeps all the details on your phone. It keeps all of the, the cache and the storage. So this way, the moment that you would like to go back into that application, all you would have to do is tap right here. You can see that there's a little cloud icon. You can just re-download the application to your phone. So it is saving space on your device. It's saving battery, so it's not always giving you notifications. And it's just a way that you can go back into the application without having to reinstall it manually, as well as re-putting in all your details. All of your login information is sitting right here. You can open it up as if you almost never took a break. Now, if you consider this versus the other way, which is fully uninstalling the application, that means that you would actually have to go back, search for it in the Google Play, and then put in all your login credentials. Maybe you might have 2FA and such, and you have to go and find that, that additional code. This is just a way that you're able to go back into it later, but take a full complete break while also saving storage and space on your device. So that is everything that I wanted to share in today's video. Those are my top five favorite features, and you can probably see why. Also, everything that's new with this latest update of Android 15 Beta 2.2. Hopefully you guys appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.